Okay, we're going to introduce you to Microsoft Project here today. So, I've got two Microsoft Project files open on my computer here. First, I have a completed ASG IT governments template. Now, this file is showing you uh, a completed project plan. Um, all kinds of notes, resource notes. Uh, you'll see the entire timeline and Gantt chart view here. Uh, if I slide this over, you'll see all kinds of other information about resources assigned, start finish dates and durations, predecessor relationships, all kinds of crazy stuff on there. What would I, what I'd like to do is just start by getting your feet wet a little bit and understanding how project works. We're going to start with a blank screen. We're going to start from scratch and uh, see how close we can come to that project plan and uh, understanding how how project works. So. I've, to save some time and energy here, I've supplied a text file that shows you all the, uh, the task names. Uh, often the most difficult part of getting a project plan set up is just getting the, the tasks typed into, the, into the, the list to begin with. So to speed that up a little bit, I'm going to copy and paste those, uh, that list into project. So if I come out here to the IT governance task list, I've highlighted the entire list here by hitting Control A and then I hit Control C to copy. I'm going to come in here to the task list and paste that in. Control V. Now I've got an extra one up top here because I did this twice. I'm going to delete out this first row, delete a task. I'll get rid of that one now. You'll see that the, I've got the complete list. If I scroll down to the bottom, I should have 30, I believe 34, 30, oh, 46, 46 lines, 46 tasks that I've identified. That's, we've got a lot of work to do on this project. Uh, but you'll notice in this list, it looks a little different than my other uh, project list over here where everything's all nice and indented and uh, kind of you can kind of see how things fit together. I've got summary tasks on this list that show, okay, this is a set of tasks that fit together from start to finish in the planning phase. So here's the planning phase, and here's all the subtasks that fit below the, fan, the planning phase. And I even have a, uh, an event down here at the end, planning phase complete, that we can make into a milestone. Anyway, let's go back over to the, our blank, our uh, original screen here. At this point, all we have is a task list. So we want to be able to understand how to do the indenting part. Um, uh, first thing to understand in, in uh, dealing with tasks is that you've got two modes. You've got either a, right now everything's scheduled in a manual mode. You see everything has these pins on it. It means that they're manually scheduled. Now if I highlight all of those, I can switch those over to auto schedule. And this now ties all of these tasks together you notice that uh, I've got a default duration set on all of them now for one day and they show up on my Gantt chart as basically it looks like I'm gonna I've got to do all this work in one day right uh, that's not good so we're gonna do a few things to try and tie these together first we're gonna work with the the work breakdown structure idea and let's add in a WBS column here I'm going to insert a new column into my project file so insert WBS, scroll all the way down here, I've got a WBS column. These are preset fields that are already built into Microsoft Project. And the reason I add this in there is so that you can see that as I now work with the indent and outdent uh, buttons, this basically treats it like an outline. Uh, if you're doing a written outline view of a WBS, uh, this is how you'd indent these uh, lines to show how they fit together. Sorry, I get all these pop-ups. I hope that doesn't bug you too much. But okay, the uh, if I highlight all of these rows down below the first one, actually, let me show you this first. If I outdent that, it brings it back to the same level. If I indent, it drops it down below. Uh, you'll notice it makes this top task a summary task for all the tasks down below it. So first thing I'm going to do is. Uh, show let's go back and look at our template for a minute we can see how the first task 
became a subtask, and I'm not showing the WBSU here. I'll insert that column here as well, just to show. Now we've got an overall project that's numbered at zero, and everything else falls in line underneath that zero level project. So let's come back over here to our uh, our work zone and say, okay, how are we going to do that? Um, right now ours is set as zero. Our, our, our WBS task is set as one and everything just numbers down from there. Let's figure out how we can start that at zero. Uh, let's see, if I go to the Gantt chart format, uh, nothing seems to be working there. Go to the view. This is getting you familiar with the ribbon in Microsoft Project. You'll notice there's several tools available under each view. There's a view, uh, there's a project list, uh, there's a resource list. So resources are talking about people and teams. And, uh, the task list gives you information about the individual tasks on the project. So there's the ribbon. You'll notice it looks like, a lot like other Microsoft Office software and it's very, very user-friendly. It's a big difference in the Microsoft Project 2010 version over the 2007 version was the inclusion of the ribbon. Okay, so I need to be able to Okay, so I need to be able to establish my WBS structure for this uh, deployment of IT governance project. Uh, just to review, if I switch over to the other project here, I've got, you can see how this is indenting things and, and uh, including the WBS code here in the template. Now let's come back over here and uh, be able to recreate that. Uh, first thing I'm going to do here is under the Gantt chart tools under the format tab, I'm going to go to the project summary task. And now it gives the overall project a name. Uh, I'm going to double click on that and my, I'm going to name my project the uh, Deployment of IT Governance. Uh, so there's my, there's my project name. I'm going to delete this task now because I don't want the duplication between the two. I've got my, my title, and there. Everything else is going to fall underneath that. So you'll see on the first few tasks here, if I look back at the, uh, the guideline, I've got the envisioning phase becomes the second branch on the second level. So first branch is launch initiative, second branch is envisioning phase. Uh, down underneath the envisioning phase, we have subtasks that fit underneath there. So I'm going to work on the indenting for these first few uh, down to 10. Uh, and let's see if we can make that match. So I'm going to come back over here. We'll say the envisioning phase goes down to step 10 or 11 there. Envisioning phase complete. So all of that fits under the envisioning phase. And go back to the task tab and indent all of those tasks. Um, now, some of these become subtasks under the first level. Let's go back and look at our model again real quick. We've got 2.1.2.3.4.5. So five other subtasks that fit underneath establish a governance framework. These are subtasks. So let's go back and match those up. So from here, down to one, two, three, four, five. Those are all subtasks. I'm going to indent those. And then the envisioning phase complete. You can bring that back out. I'm actually going to leave that in there on this version and turn this into a milestone event. So if I click on this last one and click on the milestone, it's going to create a new one. So that's not what I want to do. I actually want to just switch this and give it a zero day duration. You'll notice how that changes the icon there that where uh, the bar turned into a diamond with a date on it and that becomes a milestone. So when the planning phase is complete that's going to be our milestone to say okay we, we've, we've reached a, a completion point and we've completed our, our envisioning phase. So this is how to build 
and work with the WBS, you notice that it, it automatically renumbered everything for me according to a, a standard WBS format uh, and numbering scheme. So that's the basic, basics of working with the WBS portion.